Okay, so hi Riti, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, thanks for taking out time to be here. Uh, so it would be really great if you could just give your introduction a bit. Great. Yeah. So hi Sukhad. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me to your channel. Your channel, I have been following it for quite some time, and it's highly helpful. <laughs> for my introduction, uh, I'm a final year postgraduate from IIT BHU. Mm -hmm. So I was enrolled enrolled in a dual degree course at IIT BHU. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I have been uh, programming from uh, my third year. So yeah, so to get into IIT, like it was like everyone's dream, even my dream also. So it required a lot of hard work, and you finally made it through. So like, uh, how was it like when you got into IIT? Were you did you always know that you will be taking computer science only, or like at that time you decided like after you get got your rank and after that? Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, so I went to Kota to prepare for the IITs. Okay. Uh, honestly, people feel that I did a lot of hard work, but uh, <laughs> if you take my honest opinion, I didn't do much. Hmm. Uh, I didn't get a very good rank, first of all. So okay. my rank was uh, triple eight one. Okay. Uh, so uh, first reaction was that there's a eight extra in that. Okay. Uh, then uh, I didn't get computer science. I got a non-core branch. Uh, so mm. my branch was industrial chemistry. Okay. That is what I got. It, it was a five-year course. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so regarding computer science, uh, for the first two years, I didn't even touch my laptop. The only thing which I used my laptop was for opening Gmails and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I started programming after my second year ended. Okay. So mm -hmm. that that is when... Uh, I got very bad grades uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I went to the seniors that uh, bhaiya job kaise lagi? Mm -hmm. so <laughs> there was some good guy who told me that you need to code and uh, all the jobs are in programming mm -hmm. so that is when I started after my fourth semester ended mm. okay so like how was the first two years at IIT like how did you feel at that time yeah so uh, uh, getting into IIT, I would say it's a pretty humbling experience yeah. in general. Yeah. When you get into the college, uh, um, you feel that uh, you are a very smart guy, you know a lot of stuff. And uh, mm. so, um, in the outside world, people are very, uh, like, very appraising of mm -hmm. you. Everybody thinks of you as the smart guy in your group. You are the topmost guy in your school. Mm. In, but <laughs> when you get into the IIT, everybody is an IIT. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> you have a very, very talented people there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very, very humbling experience. You uh, get to know a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of clubs. There are a lot of seniors doing amazing, amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's overwhelming in general. Yeah. And it's very hard to like, uh, for me, it was very hard to keep track of my studies and academics mm -hmm. when, when once I got in. So yeah. for the first two years, I was just into exploring stuff. Mm -hmm. I was a part of various clubs in my, in my college. Mm -hmm. uh, I was into sports. I was into cultural activities. I was uh, into some technical stuff too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is how things went. And uh, sadly, uh, I didn't uh, focus much on academics for the first two years. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that is my story in general. Yeah, I, I don't think that anyone does uh, while in college. So it is mostly fun and all the learning different experiences. There are different things to learn about. Yeah, so it was quite great. I developed a lot socially. When I came to the college, I was a big introvert, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> I was not very comfortable with going to random people and interacting with them. But uh, those two years helped me a lot in opening me up in general. So, like now I am very open. I go on solo trips. I am very open to talking to new people in general. So, that is... Uh, something which uh, like got inculcated because i got into iit uh, it's it's the same in other colleges too i guess but the peer group in general was very uh, good i would say great great yeah so uh, like what advantages did you feel love, like after first joining uh, of iit which you think wouldn't have been there with other colleges hmm. uh, after interacting with my friends from school who were in private colleges mm. first of all uh, the culture in iits is something which is uh, which it is different for all the iits but it's mm. something which is very amazing and it's something which 
is very necessary for you to develop hmm. in other colleges in private colleges i'm not sure about everywhere but uh, from what i heard uh, the clubs were not that great and yeah. uh, people mostly went to the college to study and then they came back hmm. so okay. uh, that is what uh, like in iits what happens is the college is the side part i would say the academics <laughs> is the side part yeah after three become becomes the fun part and since you stay in hostels and uh, so you uh, are more focused in the evenings in the clubs uh, interacting with people meeting new people mm. meeting seniors and uh, uh, since uh, people in general are smart so there are a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff is happening everywhere mm. even in uh, suppose someone somebody is into music so my uh roommate was the secretary of the western music club in the college oh that's great uh, so <laughs> he, he was a very good guitar player. he is a very good guitar player so mm-hmm. uh um, in for the first time in my life i was seeing somebody playing guitar in so well mm-hmm. yeah um, i had a very good friend who was the swimming captain uh, of our college i was in the chess team okay. in the college so great uh you get to explore a lot of new things and, and the main thing is with really smart people Mm-hmm. so i am a big yeah. proponent of the phrase that you uh, become the average of the five people five you spend people. the most time with mm-hmm. uh, didn't uh, realize it from the first year but now i uh, <laughs> like i have seen examples yeah yeah it depends a lot the peer group depends a lot uh, because i only think in the college only thing that matters is the people who are around the alumni the studies uh, i don't think they they are even used in whatever we do in the life ahead <laughs> yeah yeah okay so like uh, when you started coding in third year so like you said that you so you had some programming experience from school like any no, language no, like, no. no zero experience zero okay. experience so you just started so which language did you choose and how did you choose it so in my fourth semester mm. uh, it's it came very late for our particular course mm. uh, the first uh, computer course which we were introduced to was introduction to c okay so that was in my fourth semester So hmm. that was I would say the my first experience in how programming works. Hmm. I didn't learn a lot in that course to be frank. Yeah. Uh but yeah, uh I knew that this is how uh, programming goes on. So mm-hmm. then I everybody starts with C++ I guess. There hmm. are very few people who start with Java. Yeah. Uh the main reason for starting in C++ was that uh, everybody was doing it in C++ and the competitive programming culture for our particular college is very great okay like uh, i interacted with my peers from iit bombay iit kanpur mm. uh, all the other iits but in iit bsu uh, i am from iit bsu so mm. the competitive programming scene was very great there were a mm. lot of competitive coders and everybody mm. coded in c++ mm-hmm. so that is why i started in c++ first two months were very frustrating uh, mm. it was summers uh, back then and uh, mm-hmm. i was alone in my uh, hostel mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah it was a struggle i couldn't even understand the basic errors the overflow errors yeah. which was coming initially that so, happens a lot yeah so that is how i started <laughs> uh, but uh, i told you about the peer so i had a friend who uh, lived four rooms next to me mm. and he was one of the top most competitive programmers for our college oh. so <laughs> na, i went to him and i was like uh, like gyan chahiye baba gyan do <laughs> and uh, yeah that is how things started mm. uh, initially i struggled a lot but i went to him again and again and uh, yeah he helped me a lot okay coincidentally he is also working at uh, google now so he will be joining google next month okay that's great so did did you also do some competitive programming after this yeah okay. yeah yeah so in our college uh, i would say most of the people who start in the first second year do competitive programming first and then they get introduced to lead code at the uh, last yeah, yeah that that used to happen used in my college yeah. yeah so uh, <laughs> personally for the first 6 to 8 months i didn't even know what lead code is or interview mm. bit is yeah i just thought that uh, code forces and code chef are the only two platforms which people use and hacker mm. rank is one mm. so uh, coding was just like uh, sitting in contests mm. solving whatever you can and then off solving the rest of the problems uh, mm. after that after that mm. personally what i felt afterwards is it didn't help me a l- it didn't help me a very much in learning new data structures mm. because you go do you don't get much free questions yeah, in code forces yeah. you don't get uh, much graph questions in code forces if you get them then they are very hard very hard yeah exactly 
but uh, it made me very fast in implementing and thinking, thinking a lot of stuff yeah yeah, yeah yeah so that is what i did for the first 7 uh, to 8 months hmm. and then uh, so after 7 to 8 months i was in my 6th semester hmm. uh, and then covid hit okay and uh, when covid came uh, then i realized that it's only so for a 5 year course uh, mm-hmm. what happens is after your 3 years end then mm-hmm. you the internship companies come for you okay. for you mm-hmm. after 3 years mm-hmm. it's 2 uh, years for the 4 year people okay. so all my friends had uh, sit for the internship tests and mm-hmm. uh, they had given the test so they told me that uh, the questions will be similar to what are, they are in lead code at interview mm-hmm. okay so uh, in the summer Uh, so after my six semesters ended, mm. I solved whole whole interview bit. So I finished okay. interview bit uh, from Completely. end to end. Okay. Yeah, That's and uh, I did a lot, lot of questions on lead code. So more than I don't remember the numbers, but almost three uh, hundred questions on lead code. Okay, got it. So that is what I did, and I didn't have any development experience to be frank. Yeah. I just had some. Mm. uh very few dummy projects i would say mm-hmm. uh so yeah that is what i had okay so like uh like you just told like you learned from your peers so generally like what happened in my college was uh like around i would say 90% of the people just wanted to get the job and uh, do some coding for it uh, there were only 10% of the people who were involved in like some something to do a masters or some people who are in open source or something like that so like what was this ratio like in the iit ah so that's a very good question in mm. uh, i would say there are people who are inclined towards masters mm. there are people who are inclined towards open source uh, but uh, i feel that in iit is uh, people are generalists in general like mm. uh, there is a guy i knew from friends who had done open source mm. but they when time came they got very good at competitive programming too okay so, so uh, yeah office. and there were there were people who had uh, very good competitive programming profiles and then they uh, like made great coders in development too okay but uh, if you talk about the ratio i guess uh, there were almost uh, i'm not very sure but almost 25 to 30, 30 selections in gsoc this year from our college okay the mm. previous year i guess this mm-hmm. year the results have not yet come i guess mm-hmm. but the previous year uh, uh, there were 25 to 30 and the guy i was talking about mm-hmm. uh, who taught me uh, initially mm. he got a uh, like the 8th or 9th rank in acm icpc uh, regionals kharpur okay. regionals okay so Great. there were also world finalists in our college uh, there was a guy named hitman there was bhavi jain mm-hmm. uh, so yeah there were uh, people in every domain anything okay. you wanted you could get there. Uh, there they had a club of programmers in our college mm-hmm. and they had a development wing they had a computer programming wing they had a machine learning wing okay so you had people everywhere mm. whatever your interest lied okay so so like when you were doing this competitive coding and things so did you enjoy doing it or you like you had to do it for the job no personally for when i started i pretty much enjoyed it hmm. i would tell you the reason hmm. uh, in co- code forces you have a option of following people yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, what we did was <coughs> we used to follow everybody who used to do computer programming in college hmm. so when you follow everyone and then you give a contest then you can see the live uh, ratings, ratings of those people there mm-hmm. and that uh, like uh, that gives you a sort of uh, healthy competitive uh, spirit mm. you know so you more. are you are seeing that that guy solved four questions mm. in just one hour and you are stuck on the second then after the contest what happened was i used to approach <laughs> that guy okay. with his solution and then ask him that what did you do here mm. so that uh, was both enjoyable and uh, that helped me learn quite fast i would say okay so, so like you would say that uh, if you are doing competitive programming having some friends who are also doing along with you obviously helps. obviously like if you don't have friends then it would it would get uh, boring pretty Very fast good. yeah you are right mm-hmm. uh, also for the interview bit part and the lead code part uh, i had a friend who was preparing i had two friends uh, mm-hmm. 
who were preparing for their placements mm-hmm. and i never used to do it alone mm-hmm. like uh, we every day had a meet for maybe 15 minutes or call for 10 minutes mm-hmm. then we decided that we were doing to do this part mm-hmm. tomorrow mm-hmm. and then we solved 10 to 15 questions and then we came back and discussed about uh, whether whatever our doubts were mm-hmm. and that helped me a lot okay got it okay so you fi- after doing this you finally got an intern at my karma i think yeah 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 i got a, a internship at my karma that was a on campus internship hmm. okay uh that was going to start next year hmm. in may so yeah. after the getting the internship i was pretty free like yeah. i didn't have okay. much to do then i was roaming around on linkedin i would say and i got a opportunity at interview bit okay, okay. so i interned that interview bit for 8 months okay I would say that was my first full fledged experience about how software development works in general. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any idea uh, about uh, how program how what people do in companies really. Mm-hmm. So so you did this internship part time with your college. It was a full time internship but since covid was going on so okay. uh, college was I was able to manage. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Academics uh, personally academics is not something which I focused on much. Yeah. So <laughs> Also, our college was pretty uh, chill in general. Personal, okay. uh, specifically, my branch was pretty chill. Mm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I did this internship for eight months. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were I was working as a full stack developer, and uh, I learned a lot there. Uh, the I the front end there was React, mm-hmm. the back end was Ruby on Rails, mm-hmm. and I was developing many features from scratch. You see the LinkedIn work experience section? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is something which I built from scratch there. Okay, from interview bit only. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Interview bit has a separate wing named Scaler Academy. Yeah, you yeah, must be yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing that, so I was working for them. Interview yeah. bit, um, as far as I know, they don't. Uh, they aren't working much on the interview bit side. They are mm. working more on scaler, scaling sorry. scaler cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, like in this uh, time when you were at interview bit, did you do any coding after this? Like anything on competitive side or lead code? Uh, no, Comp- uh, competitive programming. <laughs> because what happened? I would I will uh, say uh, most of my friends got placed. So say stop. And <laughs> everybody left. And uh, then personally, it was a bit uh, hard for me to uh, do competitive programming. So I was in touch. <laughs> I was doing lead code. I, I was then introduced to lead code interview bit. So hmm. I was seeing questions, but I was not doing those frequently. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. So after this internship, uh, there was the time for job placements. Yeah. So after my, this internship, I you did it my at karma. my karma. Yeah, yeah. I started the internship right after in my <coughs> karma. Uh, that was when the second wave was going on. Hmm. So this internship was also virtual, remote. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, it was for two months, and then I got a PPO from my karma. Okay. So I was not allowed to sit for the college placements. Oh, so like even if you have a PPO, like even if some company comes with a higher package, you cannot sit. Yeah, you can sit as far as I know. Um, if you accept the PPO, of course. Okay, so you yeah. have option of rejecting the PPO. Mm. I accepted it, mm. and uh, then the rule is that if if you have a PPO and uh, you uh, want to sit into a new company, then there are two conditions, three conditions. Mm. Your CPI must be eight point five. Mm. Uh, uh, almost more than fifty percent of your batchmates must be placed, 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 and the CTC of the new company should be. Two times the CTC of your current company. Okay. <laughs> so that was not uh, happening. <laughs> yeah, leaving the first condition, uh, nothing was happening. So yeah. Okay. I was out of the placement. <laughs> okay. So you then move on to find the off-campus side of things. Side of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So after yeah. placements, uh, the placements were going on. People were getting placed. I was just uh, seeing it like watching a reality show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, after that, uh, my yeah, I saw that people were applying off campus. Mm. Personally, I was not much interested, but then somebody reached out to me from Google. Okay. So, uh, I was uh, on a trip to Sikkim at that time. Mm. So I told them that you need to wait. I'll come back and then I'll give the interview. Mm. So then I started preparing again. Okay. Uh, while Google was going on, I got a, <laughs> I got a. Interview call from Cred, okay. Cred India, mm. and they ro- gave me an offer for okay. the for a backend engineering role. Mm. Uh, 
do you want me to elaborate further about what happened in them yeah yeah so uh, when you started preparing for google did you uh, just move to lead code and interview bit or yeah yeah that was the time when i just uh, went to lead code i would say hmm. i didn't prepare much uh, it was just 15 days of preparation mm-hmm. and i was also interning at my karma so the my karma internship didn't end okay, they the extended the internship and they told me that you can continue it okay part time however you want mm-hmm. so uh, i was interning there i was preparing also and meanwhile i gave the cred uh, cred uh, uh, mm. interviews and then they gave me you offer, the offer. Okay. yeah <laughs> so i didn't take that offer from cred okay okay and uh, then after a month or so google uh, i had all my rounds at google hmm. and then uh, the hiring committee rejected me okay got it so i guess there were some issues in the last round regarding speed mm-hmm. so yeah they rejected me uh, then was the time i <laughs> i was feeling very bad like okay. uh, yeah uh, that was the first time i felt that i should have prepared more and stuff mm-hmm. so <clears throat> uh, meanwhile i was checking la- out on linkedin people were getting international offers which was mm. pretty new to me yeah. yeah i didn't even know that people can get international offers from you directly, directly. i <clears throat> i <clears throat> saw one uh, one of your, your videos mm-hmm. in which you gave us a doc of companies who hire yeah. internationally mm. i didn't have any hopes to mm. be frank mm-hmm. i just applied uh, on a bunch of them okay Okay. not even a referral i just applied directly. directly exactly yeah because i didn't have any hopes i had mm. zero hopes about them mm-hmm. so uh my first international inter- interview mm. uh, happened with shopee in singapore okay, mm-hmm. okay. okay. uh and uh, yeah so do you want me to elaborate on the rounds and how it went no like just what was the outcome of that yeah so i got <laughs> rejected on i in shopee singapore okay so it it involved like dsn algo only or some different kind of things yeah so i would say the interview process for international offers is pretty different uh, okay. okay they don't focus much on dsn um, mm. from india in india what i felt was if it's a uh, difficult interview then only the dsa part will be difficult mm. but the main things which they ask are the same same yeah same. just the dsa part can get difficult mm-hmm. in uh, in those companies uh, i saw that the dsa part was not that important the dsa part was pretty easy i would say okay but they focus more on your internship experiences okay. your development experience your projects hmm. and system design okay got it <laughs> and that is something which i was not <clears throat> much experience in and in at that time so okay. i got rejected in the last round it was a low level design round okay got it, got it. in which you have <laughs> and i got class design for that. okay yeah mm-hmm. yeah so that's new because in my times also uh, the low level design was not being asked by many companies like even with international office there were people who got to facebook london even they were not being asked the uh, low level design but uh, now the trend is changing and people have started asking to the freshers also yeah <clears throat> so i had two interviews on shopee singapore and okay. Uh, okay. the first interview was half dsn half system soft system design okay and the second interview was whole system design okay got it <coughs> okay then then you gave then the for the uh, uh, yeah, yeah yeah so then uh, mm, i had a interview with amazon luxembourg okay so i got a mail from the recruiter and uh, the first thing which i did was i googled where luxembourg is okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so yeah then i interviewed with them uh, it was a, it was a standard uh, amazon fresh grad interview mm-hmm. but uh, the uh, uh, i had four rounds mm-hmm. amazon focuses a lot on leadership principles mm-hmm. i was sure you know mm-hmm. that yeah so all the four rounds the first half was dedicated to the leadership principles mm-hmm. and uh, sorry i had three rounds for amazon mm-hmm. and the first two rounds the second part was for dsa and in the last round the second part was for last part was for system design okay okay so that that amazon also involves system design okay. yeah yeah got it it was very new to me because in india amazon doesn't ask system design to fresh yeah 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 your yeah so uh, fortunately i got that offer and uh, uh, that was the first international offer which i got and uh, they gave me option of picking any office in the european union uh, mm-hmm. the london offices were filled so i took the dublin one okay and uh, yeah the second uh, interview the third interview uh, 
international interview was for Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs okay. Warsaw. 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 So uh, you would be surprised, but I didn't even write a single line of code throughout the whole interview. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's pretty different. <laughs> yeah, that was the interview ended, and I was like, uh, I didn't even write anything. <laughs> and the amazing part is that they rolled me an offer. Okay, <laughs> so how many interviews were there? Uh, there were uh, two interviews, one hour interviews with uh, two people taking them, and this interview went totally wild. So they were focusing on encryption. They were focusing on how. Cookies work. How cash okay. works. Okay. How microservices work in general. Why should you prefer microservices over monoliths? And uh, they <coughs> were asking all sorts of questions on my uh, projects. So not as not even a single DSA question was asked. Uh, and uh, <coughs> both the interviews were focused totally on uh, design and uh, development and. Uh, general questions in, i would say operating system level questions networking questions so this was a goldman interview in india i think disha and rcgm have the such kind of rounds uh, where they ask these kind of questions uh, so goldman sachs also asked these that, that's also new to me i've never heard about it yeah i interviewed with goldman sachs for internship one year back and uh, they didn't even ask me a single operating system or networking question then i got rejected uh, but yeah the process was very different then okay so i think the, then there is a difference between the international interviews and the okay. yeah that is what i felt after <coughs> also after getting rejected from shopee i figured out that i needed to uh, learn system design mm. so i went on the repo the system design primer primer and, uh, yeah. and then learned a lot about it mm. yeah, yeah. also my project uh, was uh, very nice at my karma so i had to build mm. an api gateway for microservices and because of that i was forced to learn a lot of high level design. Mm. okay yeah yeah that helps a lot like if you have that kind of work only then it helps a lot yeah and the people uh, everywhere i interviewed the people were very very uh, impressed with the project i was doing because it was a very critical project for the company I think My Karma is a great company for people who have to learn. My Karma is a very good company for people who have to learn. Uh, I like I rejected cred for My Karma. Also, uh, the people are very nice. Uh, the work culture is very amazing. Also, my manager was uh, was very very good. So, yeah. Great. Then you uh, finally gave the Microsoft. Yeah, so after the Amazon offer, uh, I a Microsoft recruiter reached out yes. from Dublin uh, okay. and uh, I gave that interview. Mm. So yeah, this interview, I had four rounds. Okay. Uh, one was online round. Every uh, interview had an online round. Online yeah. <laughs> uh, they were pretty easy. For the international uh, offers, they were very, very easy, I would say. In India, it was not the case. In India, if you said for uh, DSO, if you said for Uber, then yeah, the tough. rounds are tough. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in the Microsoft uh, interview, the first interview was for a high level role, high level design. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they told me to, uh, they gave me a problem statement and they told me that you start from scratch. Mm. So, the main thing which I realized got it was more of an interaction in general. So, I needed okay. to ask them questions like what, what should yeah. I focus on? Should I focus on uh, more availability? Should I focus more on scalability? Is mm -hmm. consistency something which we care about in this type mm -hmm. of uh, thing? So, there was a, the first round was a high level round. The second one was a DSA round. Mm -hmm. Again, I would say the DSA round was surprisingly easy. Okay. <laughs> and the third round was a low level round. Okay. So, these were the three rounds and the last round was a managerial round. Okay. All rounds were of 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then they gave me an offer. Okay, got it. Uh, that's pretty great. So, uh, like when you got these offers, so after that, what did you do? Like, uh, <laughs> your job hunt was over. So, you got a lot of time. Yeah, I, so I'm not a person who celebrates much uh, mm -hmm. alone. Uh, mm -hmm. You need people, right, to celebrate. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was at home, didn't celebrate mm -hmm. much, but yeah, I was uh, happy. Uh, Mm. Uh, 
I also um, just to give you some <laughs> more details, uh, Microsoft offered me a L60 load. <laughs> so in general, Microsoft offers L59 refreshes. Yeah, so yeah. that is something which I was feeling uh, very good about. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I went on a solo trip to uh, various places. I went to Sikkim. I went to Rishikesh. So yeah, okay. That Great. is what I did. That's awesome. So like like you said that you traveled a lot at this time. So did you meet people on these solo trips or wherever you went? Yeah, just uh, <laughs> two days back I was in Rishikesh and. To, uh, to your surprise, to my surprise, I met four uh, IIT graduates in the very hostel I was uh, in. Okay. So I met a senior from IIT Bombay, I met a senior from IIT Guwahati, I met a senior from IIT Delhi, hmm. and everybody was in the same hostel. Okay. okay. Nice. That's pretty amazing. Okay. Yeah. So, like, uh, which hostels do you prefer? Like, hostel, ghost stops? Yeah, I prefer staying in um, hostels, uh, hostel, ghost stops, every, uh, the f pattern is the same. So I prefer those mm -hmm. because uh, you get to meet uh, a lot of new people, people and mm -hmm. that is what something which uh, excites me. Uh, meeting yeah. new people, uh, learning about them, getting their perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. So uh, like people from uh, your college also did get international offers like in your batch. <laughs> Uh, I have not heard of anybody uh, from my batch who has got an international offer off campus. Hmm. Uh, on campus, but they were companies. On <laughs> campus, uh, I guess one guy got Uber International, that too for USA. Okay. So that uh, that was one offer which uh, I heard about. I knew him. He was an intern at my karma previously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and they, I I had seniors who were at Microsoft Redmond. Mm. So, they had got them on campus. The thing with IITs is, the placements are so good on campus that people mm. don't even know and don't even care about off-campus placements. Mm. The only reason why I tried a, the off-campus ones be, were because uh, <laughs> COVID was going on and I didn't have much stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. got it. That's great. So, so you think that uh, for being from IIT, had you get the required calls to actually fit in the interviews, or uh, was it because of your skills that you already had uh, from previous internships? Personally, I would say <coughs> getting in uh, the IIT tag didn't help me in getting interviews. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, for the international offers or the international recruiters, they don't even know or they don't even care. Yeah. yeah. Also, my branch was not computer science, so that was a major deterrent, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, there were companies where I applied and people from private colleges applied and they got a call and I didn't because mm -hmm. maybe the recruiter say, saw that I was not from CSE and she mm -hmm. filtered me out. Uh, but uh, suppose you have an interviewer who is Indian, mm -hmm. then, that, that. then it's a psychologically it uh, works in his mind that yeah this guy must be smart yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. that is how things help <laughs> also uh, for reference if you want a referral then mm. it would it will be very helpful so suppose yeah you have a big uh, alumni network because... yeah yeah a big alumni network everywhere any company i want i can reach out to alumni there are alumni everywhere mm. our college is a very very old one so yeah, yeah. it it got started in 1916 <laughs> yeah, yeah so right. Uh, also, my car is founded by our alumni. So, eighty okay. percent of the developer team is from IIT BHP. <laughs> that, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that is how the tag helped me. But um, if you uh, tell about calls, then no. All, uh, the uh, advantage from about being in IIT is first of all the peer group, mm. and the second thing is the placement. So, if you sit for placements in IITs. If you have a circuital branch, mm -hmm. then I would say even if you don't know anything, mm -hmm. I'm sure you will get placed. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, from what I realized in IIT, jobs are given uh, like they uh, they serve you on a plate. The jobs if you are from circuital branches. Okay. okay. If Go you on. are not from circuital branches, then also it will be very easier for you to get jobs on campus. Hmm. Provided you work a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah.
so like but mostly what i have seen that mostly uh, iitm is all the people they are usually smart to actually know a lot of things instead of just getting offers like that yeah, so yeah that's true that's true <coughs> but uh, the companies are so the companies are so many that uh, on day 4 day 5 the companies don't even get students to interview so okay. everybody is placed okay so that is what i was talking about like i have known people who uh, did not have that good profiles mm-hmm. but they got very good offers because they were sitting in our college placements mm-hmm. okay right so that's, that's one benefit of it yeah right? but if you want to get the dream companies the day zero companies then it's a fight there also because yeah. uh, There's suppose a lot of competition yeah suppose uber is coming suppose nutanix is coming suppose google disha they are coming then it's day zero and all the main programmers will be there who are who are competing with you mm-hmm. so that stuff but i was talking about general jobs so yeah 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 it's great rithik congratulations on all the offers that you got like it's pretty amazing uh, really happy for you and uh, <laughs> Hopefully you will be going to Dublin soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for you for uh, sharing the details and sharing the doc. The doc is very helpful. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that it could help you uh, a bit, and I hope it helps others too. Yeah. So uh, you're quite a traveler too. So now you get to do international trips. <laughs> so <laughs> so Dublin is uh, in EU. So just explore complete EU. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is what the plans are. Great. Great. Thanks for being on the channel. This was really great, and I think this would help a lot of IIT aspirants and also the international job aspirants who are looking. And there are some people uh, who have some preconceived notions that uh, they might not get uh, the calls because of being from a different college. Just to give you a context, uh, <laughs> there's a group, uh, WhatsApp group of uh, people who have got offers from Amazon Dublin, just mm-hmm. the Dublin one, mm-hmm. and there are a hundred people. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so, like, Amazon must be hiring there for a lot of locations. So they are hiring just, like crazy. Yeah. So you just have to find the right place and right time when they are hiring going on. Yeah. 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 Also, uh, after uh, applying so many, uh, applying for so many roles off campus, I have personally felt that uh, even if you are not from not very good college, mm. the demand for software developers is so. heavy that mm. if you know uh, basic dsa if you are able to solve lead code medium questions mm. and if you learn a, a bit of design and you know a bit of development mm. you will be able to get amazing offers from anywhere yeah yeah, yeah. doesn't right matter now, what your college is yeah, yeah. just after just covid there has been quite a surge because of less hiring during covid yeah so i think it's very helpful at this point Congrats again for your offers. Thanks for being on the channel. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, for me too.